Dacă so mergem, nu știu, jucăm două spectacole de studiu financiar, că să ne susținem, ok, putem să jucăm și trei, dar, nu știu, așa să fie vrea. Și atunci am început să mergem în diferite, în diferite spații unde lumea, practic, nu mergea niciodată. Și se exploată legea de chestia asta, faptul că copiii nu știau de la acolo, unii n-au mai văzut niciodată la spectacole de teatru. Așa că, înainte de spectacole, avem și o show de introducere, vorbeam ce înseamnă teatru, ce înseamnă ceea ce l-a făbușat sau actor și ce face cum. Erau scurte exerciții pe care le făceam în 5 minute. Nu face viața de reacție a fondului pe care le-a câștigat de foarte să susține în timp să mă fac în spui, poate că nu vreau să iei zi să te miocă. Așa de context, eu n-am început direct cu Creative din 2, că poate e important să spun că am început direct cu Creative din 2, 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 că am început direct
and then people uh, remain attached to us and they ask questions and now they are waiting us back and in wheelchair and in other places they want to know when we go back it's really uh, a motivation this uh, thing by itself is a motivation motivation that uh, people got attached to our projects they are asking us when we return and it's not so easy because we need to do projects and get funding for those and so on and so forth are there other motives other motivations or other things yes <laughs> they come and go disappear all kinds of motivations are there and disappointment sometimes also I think that we are still here the fact that we are still here means that the motivation is stronger than uh, the than the part that draws us down or back thank you very much I just wanted to say that uh, I was in a hospital with my mom at the orthopedic he she had undergone orthopedic surgeries and suddenly this was in Alba Iulia and your colleagues appeared in the hospital and it was a very nice surprise for me to see your friends there Doru uh, as long as my colleagues talked I tried to put some order in my head um, in 2013 together with Anna Madare I was returning from Barcelona uh, we had some money and we knew that we have about 18 months of uh, being unemployed and we have we, we had the plans for for 18 months and we needed to find a place and then uh, to find people a community of artists perhaps who could give uh, life to that very uh, very poor place in fact it's a it's a it's a it's a poor uh, location and uh, we invited a lot of artists to Cluj to see the space uh, in question, to meet the, uh, the public, a public that, that uh, later on became a very important community for us. But then, first of all, the community of artists from around the space, they invested their energy and it, it, has, done, uh, it has been done voluntarily. They uh, uh, really came with their time and energy. We started with productions of a, of a very low budget, like uh, th even 30 lei or 1,000 lei. Very small uh, honorariums uh, were paid, like 30 lei or 50 lei for a show. And later on, when the projects uh, got interconnected and we obtained some funding, we in, uh, put some more effort into it. And then tomorrow, for instance, we are going to have the show, uh, uh, the first show, of a, of a performance in which 30 artists had been working for almost nine months with a lot of music and when we have such a performance uh, putting putting such a performance on stage we are not only thinking of Cluj of course or around the audience of our own but uh, we always consider or try to think of how the audience can be enlarged communities from other towns for instance how we could mean the idea came somehow uh, maybe from an egoist point of view that uh, we wanted to show ourselves but later on uh, we seeked we, we sought uh, small communities in the vicinity of Cluj which don't have a theater and during the pandemic years we wanted to go out of the room uh, so we wanted to see if we can see the, the, the audience in other towns and we repeated that later on. It's called Mini Reactor. We have put on stage about three or four various performances that can be played outside uh, in the community of artists and also the public. Uh, it's, it's a common investment of, of these two. We had all kinds of community events to which more than 90 people came there's a lot of work uh, and if you do not succeed to reach an audience or a public then it makes no sense to do it so that that is why it is important to maintain a dialogue with these uh, audiences to construct in a way an audience uh, 
among the people who are interested in our activity, also in the towns. I don't think it's enough to go with one show to a community, but we, you need to return. And when you go there in the 10th time or the 15th time or the 20th time, then uh, the audience starts to build. I think that's all for the moment. Yes, our project started 13 years ago to create productions. Yeah. In the second year, we already had a show for children, and I would like to talk first of all about these educational theatre project. Our project is entitled On Four Wheels, and we already had two editions of that, and we succeeded to take these performances in various localities in Transylvania, in various towns and uh, villages where a significant Hungarian language community uh, exists and where there are not really uh, cultural institutions present like a theater or something. The motivation was to implement this pro project in order to make these performances available for the children. And in the faculty, in, in, at the university, we already met that kind of uh, uh, things and and what we we studied about that and and we wanted to put that into practice what we have learned at the university uh, we organized a, a performance which was entitled freckles uh, getting out of control or uh, and these performances were successful maybe we did not think right from the beginning and uh, these these shows practically are can be taken very easily with a car because everything that we need can fit into two suitcases and this is how we succeeded to uh, uh, reach a more and more diverse public we remembered that uh, where exactly the village i don't remember the name we went in the kindergarten, there were about 30 children and about 10 people out, 10 more children outside uh, in, in the kitchen. And we asked, what are they doing there? And they said, well, they could not afford to buy the ticket. And we said, it doesn't matter. They, they can join as well. And then we succeeded to obtain funding uh, from various sources. And then we made projects in order to address this issue. Uh, sometimes if the school said that they can help us with a certain amount of money then we accepted that the motivation presently I wouldn't really like to talk about the motivation right now yes it's a uh, we all work in independent theatre and it is very important f uh, for us uh, to identify the motivations we don't have institutions to support us behind us and the personal uh, personal situation of our cooperators doesn't always permit to go on with the project and then in that case the project suffers for instance we are in a situation in which uh, all of us started to have families, uh, other, we entered into a different stage in our lives and this makes the projects suffer a little bit. So we don't know what our future will look like. But right now we have a couple of projects that are still running. We perform one here, for instance. I am optimistic, but maybe a, a break or a, 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 a pause of one year Will, will not do harm to anyone. I uh, don't have a problem with the language, but with my uh, feelings, yes. So whatever Levy has just said. For instance, the Shoshin has been founded by Kaga Chongora and myself, and we make up a family. And when 
our children were born, everything changed. So, is it fair to talk about such things in a roundtable discussion? Yeah, I guess it is, because everything has changed. I need to stay at home, or my husband needs to stay at home, and things change altogether. So the Shoshin was uh, founded eight years ago, and we took the break. Uh, Levi uh, wants to make good use of, well, we had this break last year, and I guess that our men that the people's mental and physical uh, status is very important, because at some point you don't really know uh, I mean, I don't really know why I should stay up until 2 a.m. to organize something and to pay somebody to take care of my children. So it's very important to maintain this, uh, what I call joy factor, because uh, you still feel that you also get something of whatever you are doing. For Shoshin, I guess that the key moment was when we got connected or when we saw how people got connected. The, our work is not uh, really based on productions. We have had only a couple of them so far, but we worked a lot on the pedagogical line and I will tell you why. And we have also been working with village people, village communities, uh, street theater, um, and with lots of people. And we have always been searching how it is possible co to connect in a team or how you can connect with the public, which bears a certain value. So I have certain experiences from the classical theater uh, where I play on the stage and I have no idea what happens with the public and the public has no idea whatever happens with me, actually. And I guess that this is a problem. And we have been trying to search situations which make it possible for us to connect. So for me, this day is such a day to connect. Although it is not theater, it is a like theater, because I can look into your eyes, I can look into the eyes of the people in the public, and I guess that we can uh, bond. I guess that uh, the uh, key issue is why do we need this? Well, we have realized that we wanted to use practices which are not really known here in our country. So there used to be people involved in such activities, but not in Romania. And then we got into touch with uh, people uh, there on the international uh, stage of pedagogy, and we organized lots of workshops. And after that, we realized that uh, basically the artists uh, for whom we invited these people wouldn't come. And we were trying hard to create sort of an environment of, for learning, but nobody's interested in learning. And then we said, OK, let's drop it. I don't want to uh, prolong it. I will still have opportunities to tell you things about ourselves. Yes, thank you very much. Well, I met Chongor and Aniko one year ago when they said that they would like to have a break. Well, I guess that now you deserve another one because this event has also been organized by yourselves. Yeah, we have the living proof here. You mentioned the type of activity and then my next question is connected to this. I would be curious to know how you choose your your site of work. And the second one is, how do you define your activities? Where do you see them? Is it a cultural intervention or participative uh, culture or uh, setting up performances, organizing performances, uh, run in other spaces or, or what? Well, actually, our main purpose has been production. 
and performances. And after a couple of performances, mostly for children, well, we also had a performance for youngsters that uh, production was written in the 18th century in the Hungarian literature. Uh, it's a piece of literature that is mandatory in high school. It has an archaic language, therefore nobody reads it. It's called sort of a national drama, so it's very highly ranked. And we were trying to use an adapted text and we set up a performance that is being shown in schools. So we did this in 2013 and we had over uh, 200 uh, performances. We went also to Hungary, but performances were mostly here in Transylvania and we had a large success. It is great to be part of this uh, production. So whenever we play this piece, well, the sun comes out. I cannot say that this is educational theater. It has interactive and participatory parts. <coughs> but it's mostly the storyline that is based on. And how have you chosen the places you went to? Well, basically we play in <coughs> Cluj in each and every Hungarian high school. Uh, we have a piece of luggage and our production fits into it perfectly, all of it. So we started, we started to call the high schools uh, telling them we, that we would like to go, but after a while uh, it was the high schools who called us, inviting us over there. And after that performance, we started to get interested in educational theater, which in Romania is not very well known, but it already has a very rich history in Hungary, history of over 25 years. So we got into contact with um, uh, round table uh, theater, it's called like that, from Hungary. They uh, have been involved in educational theater and uh, they uh, have been in contact with the forefathers in the UK. So we organized workshops with them, we even had a co-production with them. It wasn't a pure cut, uh, clear cut co-production because the pandemic came. So they set up a performance, we had another one. So not a classical co-production anyway. So yes, educational theater, this is how I would define our activity. As for the location, as for the site, uh, so that four-wheeled event I was talking to you about, well, uh, it's very important to have a Hungarian language community without direct access to Hungarian culture. And this is how we started to visit uh, different places, localities. First of all, small towns. Well, not necessarily small ones because we went to Brasov and to Bayamar as well. It happened quite often that uh, once we were in Brasov, we visited the neighborhood as well. And we had a bizarre story. We were playing in one of the small towns in the vicinity of Brasov. And uh, we were looking forward to meet a high school team, but they couldn't come because they were short of gasoline. So we suddenly decided that we would go over there and have the show. So as for the second edition of this four wheel project uh, took place during the pandemic and it was very difficult for us to organize uh, shows because the schools didn't accept us. And uh, my wife, by the way, family, my wife thought of calling the orphanages and uh, we did. So that's why, um, that's how we came to visit lots of uh, orphanages in very many places uh, of about eight altogether. And that was again, an awesome experience 
uh, we also went twice to a uh, uh, locality uh, close to Cluj. There, so it was it. It wasn't actually us choosing the place. It was the place choosing us. So, who would like to go on? Well, I don't know where the reactor or mini reactor projects would fit in. I guess that we are directed towards processes because all of our projects have long-term mm, stakes, so a long-term things at stake. So we are oriented towards project investigating our histories, and for the next five years, we would like to talk about the future. And together with my colleagues, we would like to see how we can approach this future as a subject matter and how we could add something to it, how we could enrich it, and how we could reach out to the public. So we are trying to uh, set up workshops, professional artistic workshops for our team, but also management and cultural management uh, courses. As for the community building, we are organizing dialogues with the public, organizing workshops, theater workshops even. And we also have cultural uh, interventions in the public space and in other communities as well. And I guess that this uh, cultural intervention is very appropriate because we are not going only once. We are attempting to have several meetings with the same people. Uh, Zalo. Zalo is a town very close to Cluj, so ac actually it is one hour drive to Cluj. Um, you can go there, uh, it's enough to have one day. Of course, we have a contact. Contact to get us into touch with the authorities, with the town halls, uh, and so on and so forth. So we tried that in Bistrica and other towns as well in Transylvania, so we've been groping around, so to say. So the dialogue with the authorities can be very complicated sometimes, as you know. But the most important thing is that we do exist and that Zalo doesn't have a theater. And OK, I'm a bit lost right now. It's nevertheless true that the Zalo is close. And at the first sight, it seemed something very simple. But in order to organize a performance, you may have to be there 10 times before you can actually uh, show the people your production. It is apparently simple. You go to Zalo and you play. But Sunday morning, 6 AM, you wake up and you need to build some efficiency around your performances because maybe once you have to play for the adults and then you have to do it for the uh, children. Yeah, so it's very complicated. And now we are trying to see what we can actually do in order to reduce certain risks. So to avoid overlapping uh, performances, nem tudom hány óra van, mert nem néztem meg, majd visítsál jó, ha lejárt a 20-25 percet. So before the pandemic, we were attempting to do seven performances a year. Well, now we are happy if we do four. So there's a lot of work. And we have a place in Cluj. We would like to go to other places. You want to keep yourself in the process, to be involved in the process. So it's very complicated. People in independent area are doing lots of uh, similar things. I am here today. Tomorrow I will have to go to my team and to sort out some banking and, and cash flow issues. So. 
it is always good to have new people showing up uh, with other targets, other towns to target. So in Cluj and around of Cluj. So oh, you have to reset all the dynamic. I don't know if my generation is ready to start. So we are taking a break with Zalo right now. Of course, if somebody invites us uh, to take a performance to Zalo, we, we do that. But actually, it is everything is complicated. And this summer with Mini Reactor, we organized a summer camp where we uh, joined together with children from different communities. This was a project that seemed very easy and beautiful, but in practice when you have to organize a summer camp, there's a lot of bureaucracy to deal with, and especially the fact that children come from different environments. This adds uh, another, another, another kind of uh, risk and other complications. Yes, so the texts. How do you, how do you choose with the text or the scenes, situations, intervention, cultural production, participative or interactive. Now, I was thinking to start with the texts because they have somehow connected to the question in the sense that when we established, before establishing the theatre, someone came to us, to Florin and me, and uh, he proposed to dramatize Cipike, Cipi uh, from Fodor Sándor, the, the, the giant dwarf. And I said, why not? And that was practically the beginning of Magic Puppet. And uh, then we said we should go out and play in communities. And then we realized that people like it. And they uh, asked us to come a second time. And then we were thinking of uh, changing uh, some things to see what kind of the problems uh, we have seen. The first problem was uh, uh, superheroes are a great fashionable thing and in the meantime children uh, learn not to beat with each other or not to fight with each other and then there are the superheroes which fight all the time so we tried to write our own uh, texts using puppets um, like Cluj type of puppets which are kept like this I'm showing with my hand and then puppets that are kept in a different way and let, let's make a magic performance or a marionette uh, or uh, uh, soap balloons and di uh, diversify the show because the children who uh, were our audience practic needed new things to see so in vain I come with classical types of shows we make it we have to make it more diverse in order to permit in, in order to permit them to get access to all kinds of new things sometimes we are even perhaps too exaggeratedly interactive uh, the, even even in, uh, the public can even detour uh, the entire show we introduce new characters we we'll take out characters and so on and then we improvised quite a lot this means a lot of improvisation and our shows in that sense are very diverse very different the same performance one year ago is completely one year ago was completely different than what we do today we play quite a lot we have uh, uh, thousands of shows uh, that are running actively we have four teams and we were playing i think uh, the, the most was uh, 12 shows in a day with magic puppets so and yes for us absolutely financial things are absolutely important for us as well but uh, still we succeeded to uh, put the accent on quantity 
to reach as many children as possible. We play quite a lot, our performances are taken, are bought, like for instance the magic show of Florin is, has been going on for uh, uh, many years and he I think has got five or ten shows every weekend. Uh, what I what I was going to say or what I want to say is that we play quite a lot and things change they are interactive and we adapt ourselves and uh, the show to the children uh, in order to make it uh, the artistic part to make it more accessible or to transmit the message more clearly or uh, if we have something that clear edu uh, educational purpose we would like to see how uh, the message can get through to the children who are our audience uh, and the spaces the, the places where you perform how do you choose them well <clears throat> just like my colleagues uh, told had told before it depends on it is uh, depending on the distance as well how you can reach uh, in the morning uh, how, uh, maybe you get up at five o'clock in the morning and I can return to Cluj in the evening so th the, f the farthest distance we succeeded to reach was Oradea and by three o'clock we uh, returned to Cluj to do the dishes at home so um, it was really very tiring indeed but later on we uh, became better known by the people and they are uh, they, we started to be invited and then we had to extend ourselves and then we, we discovered that there's not much to do in the summer and then we ca came up with new ideas. Uh, we uh, participated in various festivals in Untold, in Neversee and then going into shopping malls in during the summer or street shows so that uh, all these occasions help us maintain our shows. And this is how we succeeded. How we succeed to extend all over Romania, from Botoshain to Constanza and Arad. And uh, uh, a month ago, we've been we've been to Alexandria, for instance. So we have practically covered the entire territory of Romania. We think that uh, Florin, I, Florin and I think that we are not really good in advertising ourselves, and people come to us, but uh, in order. In, when, when we organize uh, ourselves, pe people maybe don't know about us that much. And we are trying to find the resources and the people to help us in that respect. But uh, in the meantime, uh, telephone rings all the time and we have got events all the time. So somehow people find us uh, anyway. And, uh, and then it is hard to organize all these resources and the cars logistic problems uh, to reach each and every location and the artists last year as I have mentioned the two directions theater for children and the educational part and we are uh, and how we are trying to combine these two or complete them uh, and do street performances for instance last year for instance uh, it was the pandemic and it was a moment of break and uh, we said to ourselves that it would be good to uh, create some shows for the adults, for the adult audience. And uh, we last year succeeded to organize four such shows for adult audiences. And we started to write projects to obtain some funding from the town hall and to extend ourselves, expand our activity in that area. I think uh, puppeteering is not only for children and this is really a work that uh, is hard and we need to carry that out. And But I think this is our direction. So we were playing in the morning for children, like children at the Patarut, at the, at the garbage dump of, Cla of Cluj and in the afternoon with a completely different audience so the situation was really completely different and where is our target we, because we can't really be available for everyone and then we need to select somehow and then we we said we are doing puppeteering puppet puppet theater with all which is a, uh, which is good for each and every child irrespective of the language uh, sometimes we improvised in English, then I started to speak Romanian, 
and they were all strangers and then uh, they asked I asked them well, do you understand Romanian and the audience said no and then I started with English and it worked it was very interesting it was an interesting issue and on the side of uh, adult performances or performances oriented to adult uh, we try to make shows that can be played in various places in other places right now we only can we, we can only do it in our own room in our own hall uh, uh, on our own stage but we want to diversify diversify that okay <laughs> uh, uh, it was very interesting to hear it and uh, but then uh, you should say, and then uh, Raluca hasn't answered this question either, so, uh, yeah. We choose our places of performance depending on our possibilities and the needs. The whose needs, your needs or the audience? No, uh, our possibilities and the needs of the communities we are trying to address, of course. So I think, um, where do we work? Uh, it, it greatly depends on our relationships with, uh, well, this, let's say so, uh, with international relations. Chongor worked quite a lot, uh, went, went to many workshops, and me too. And we made contacts with people with whom, uh, uh, with whom we made great uh, relationships. And uh, we really liked and enjoyed what kind of practices they use or how they approach the whole issue. And I think the soci uh, our association, Shoshin, is very, uh, very much influenced by these practices. Let me give you a, a concrete example. We had a workshop or a residence three, four years consecutively. And in these four years, some kind of a cultural barter was introduced. Chongor saw something at Odin, at Odin Week, and he liked it very much, and we tried to implement it here. And there are many different practices like that. We felt that um, it's good to try to carry out those things at home and experiment with, with those things. And we think that we never uh, tried to uh, have a show in which we impose ourselves or we don't have to don't have a competition with anyone because we know that we cannot really compete as an organization we are too small to compete with with uh, greater we managed to hire or we managed to rent out this place which looked terrible uh, but with some colleagues from various places like even uh, colleagues from the patal it's non-functional for us because we don't have uh, right now, we don't have any kind of uh, performances here. About a year, uh, a year and a half ago, the Varotel and the waiting room came in and they used this, this space. But we are very proud that uh, we are very proud that we have this with this space. We don't have our own productions, but still, we used uh, our, uh, these activities and. Uh, we were in we were involved in various european projects uh, there are villages in which we work five six seven villages around cluj and i think we will talk more about that in the afternoon maybe maybe you can say a few words about the villages how they were chosen uh, based on the distance Efficiency and uh, logistical issues are very important. We try to identify a person with whom we can have a good connection, a reliable person. A reliable person with whom we can work together. And uh, there was another there was another issue. We tried to find at least one village where shows could be carried out in Romanian, not only in Hungarian, because we did not really want to uh, close ourselves into the Hungarian uh, me uh, uh, audience 
only and so therefore we chose a village where Romanian is spoken. Our experiences are very connected, are interconnected and a lot of ideas came into my mind as I was listening to my colleagues and uh, we all practically went through all those stages that you have mentioned in the beginning in 2011 when they <clears throat> started and when I was in, uh, in the team myself as a friend and could really see their uh, problems and, and the, uh, the, thing, the, the difficulties they had to face and they wanted to create something of their own and this is art therapy uh, started in the, uh, uh, one, of the, one of the hospitals in Cluj <clears throat> because a door was open for us there and we stayed there and we have been there ever since and after that first episode, the first project, uh, the association was born and the members of the founding member, uh, the founding members wanted to establish an independent theater and film company. <clears throat> that was the initial slogan. It took quite a lot of time to achieve that. And it also meant that there, there was a space uh, that was needed. You were uh, somehow connected to a, to a black box. <clears throat> that was a, uh, that was a really hard job to find and identify. Many locations were changed. It was very complicated to pay the rent for such a space and get uh, get the necessary funds to maintain the places. We did not really have many uh, performances that that generated incomes. And then we were focusing on identity and. Uh, uh, we know how all these things changed. Uh, the children uh, got on the stage for at Urania, for instance, and for a long time, it was uh, 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 the accent was was uh, was placed or emphasis on theatre because we had uh, more collabor collaborator actors and uh, drama uh, dramaturgy uh, experts, and in addition to our vital project projects that that was to which we try to focus and then things have changed and we uh, we told ourselves we have to go back to the essence we have to find unconventional uh, uh, places why should we uh, why should we link ourselves very much or anchor ourselves to a space so we should go out to the community and find the places there find the, the suitable uh, spots where these in cultural interventions or participative art uh, projects can be carried out. And in the last two years uh, is the, the House of Tales, for instance, and all these houses could turn into some kind of memorial houses, but we want to uh, transform them into playgrounds. There are shows that going on, installations, artistic installations, special music going on there in addition to the theatrical performances. Uh, all projects in which uh, you somehow get in get uh, closer to the personality who stayed in that house, for instance. Doina Kornia's house, then at uh, on Rakovica Street or Sigismond Toduca Street, we have got such uh, we have got six such houses already in our portfolio and what I like very much is uh, this issue of going out to a place which belongs to everyone but somehow not everyone has access and then we can you know uh, revendicate or take it for ourselves occupy it it can be a cultural center in Borsha or the house where da Doina Kornia used to live but it belongs it 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 somehow uh, gets uh, we succeed to obtain it for the, the, the whole community and it, in that sense it also helps us uh, in in uh, with our financial issues and we renovated these these spaces we painted them and it was a hard thing to do and uh, now we identified as a as a community art organization and that's what we are focusing right now and that's that's the path we are following thank you very much
Well, you know that the microphones are available for the audience as well. If you, if uh, some of you would like to ask questions uh, to the participants here, I have one more question left, but then I'm relying on you if you have questions. I would be interested very much to hear a little bit about your relationships between uh, a, a, a relationship with, with people or communities that are not privileged and as Levy has said they would like to return and there are some connections that have been made they would like to return to such communities like some kind of recurrent uh, meetings it is important to see from the connections that you make, how, how many of those connections are kept or remain and can be used in the future? And um, of, uh, now, not everyone has to, but if you have got something to say about that, I would be really interested to hear them. And you can talk about the effects of your work and how, and maybe you can talk about the impact with your own terms and in, in your own words, what you feel like an impact regarding connections and relationships yes the idea is to maintain all these relationships keep them alive but uh, we know from all kinds of relationship we have in life relationships with friends maybe you want to keep or maintain relationships with everyone uh, with whom you were friends in high school for instance and but life goes on and then you don't have the energy and at one point you don't communicate that much uh, with them anymore and it's a similar thing there are certain contacts needed uh, which are benefic for maintaining the relationships and in if we are really wanted at certain place we are invited again and if we also obtain funding for that then the re then the relationship will exist or will thrive or will go on but if some of those aspects are not available, it's not always easy. For instance, when we went uh, to Vulcha uh, with art therapy, we used actors there trying to, uh, trying to create an, a, a community of artists there so that they can overtake the projects later on. But nobody really wanted to overtake the organizational part. And there's a lot of work involved in that, that I, I could see that that's what some kind of a keyword uh, well the difficult part of the of the hard work was n not really uh, something very popular to be overtaken so or taken over so um, there are places to which we cannot physically return anymore because it's just not possible and there are places where we really want to go back The transfer, the transfer is a difficult thing. And the second question, what was? Yes, it was related to the impact, the issue of impact in the community with your own words. We do it very classically. We, uh, we, uh, we have questionnaires and we work uh, with collaborators who know how to design a questionnaire, know how to ask the questions, the right questions, and so on, and they can do it really scientific, in a scientific uh, way. With, with uh, we have colla collaborators from the psychology faculty, from the education uh, program of the university, and from that we try to draw conclusions uh, that can help us improve what we are doing. And we try to gather the data from the people themselves, qualitatively rather than quantitatively quantitatively I assume well both in fact because with the hospitals uh, there are really a lot of quest questionnaires that are distributed like uh, many are collected uh, the, 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 the hospital we are working uh, the rehabilitation hospital in Cluj has got seven floors so we have got quite a lot of people involved and many questionnaires You have to
to go back to a community several times. I guess that we all know this. So we organize this uh, residence programs in Kira where we set up a space for this. Actually, it was a one week workshop where we invited people from different places in order to act as trainers and it was always the village people who were invited it was public of course where people from the village came and after three or four years only we started hearing that they miss us they are missing us they are waiting for us and they would like for the event to take place again well quite unfortunately we couldn't go back to Kida uh, we went back to another one actually it was two and I don't think that it was good for us to to make this switch but we were forced to anyway we could see how uh, relationships uh, between and among people are being built uh, between ourselves and the community and uh, that's why I say that we unfortunately had to give up on on that project sometimes we meet people we used to work with and we tell them that we had a couple of successes by using this and that and actually uh, this is what we can call impact so we do not have a public saying us oh what a beautiful performance you've had uh, we meet several people we uh, work with and each of these people take something with themselves and I guess that this is why it is worthwhile for us doing it yes I remember that at some point you worked with pensioners and you set up a, a, a production with them yes it was the Mera project so it wasn't only pensioners it was all age groups including pensioners but there were also children and we had a community performance inspired by the myths living in the locality and inspired by the stories of the people there and that is why the whole performance was very touching and personal for them and it, they took it very personally actually it was because they went to see a performance in which it was their neighbor uh, acting on the stage or playing on the stage and the public the people in the public could see their own neighbor from another angle from another point of view and actually everybody heard their own stories but the story might have been told by the perspective of another person so I guess that that performance was played twice if I'm not wrong no in Mera yeah we had one with Mera with the pensioners and one at the transit house in Cluj Did you have a different type of work in Mera than the same performance uh, in, in Cluj? Well, I couldn't work with the pensioners because I had to babysit my children. And that was... <coughs> we had a, a project. We loved... We had partners from the UK and from Germany and we would have liked to put up a small show with pensioners from Cluj and 
it was either myself or Chongor entering this project, this atypia project, because one of us had to babysit our children at home. Yeah, it's very difficult to <coughs> assess impact in these places. <coughs> because we have different kinds of financing. But you need a very deep strategic thinking. You have to prioritize. Yes, and you have to include everything. Yes, it takes a lot of work, a lot of effort. So uh, what I would like to underline as a result is that as compared to the first uh, tours, after that it was a lot easier to organize the performances because um, we've already had our contacts, we've already had our key persons. At first, uh, we had to call this person six times and introduce ourselves, and after a while, they, they knew who we were. And this is a very important impact, but what is nevertheless more important is that, is that the quality that you have already mentioned, the impact of the performances, the direct impact on the children only a couple of examples. We played in, in Budapest, which is totally different from our projects, but we played in a sports uh, high school where they train future world champions. And before us starting, the literature teacher came to us and she told us, these kids are dumb, they don't read. I'm sorry, I must apologize. And I need to say that the performance was great. It was, everything was alive. And we felt that although the children uh, live in Budapest, uh, they have never been to the theater. And especially because they don't read, the whole performance was more alive. And we've had uh, several such examples in vocational schools, different kinds of profiles. Uh, waders and uh, bricklayers. Uh, we were always uh, very uh, anxious before the performances, but the performances, uh, the performances came out great. Uh, these are not long-term uh, projects. Um, we would like to have long-term projects to go back to talk to these young people time and again. But even the carpe diem was something, uh, something awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any questions in the room? Hello there. You talked a bit about the uh, impact of the pandemic. But uh, how has the behavior of the public, how has it changed after the pandemic? And how has your team changed after the pandemic? And I'm also curious <coughs> to know whether you have any intention of, of dealing with the uh, digital environment some of you did have digital uh, presence during the pandemic. So what is the uh, participation of the public? I can feel that participation of the public has changed greatly, but I would like to uh, hear you as well. Well, from the point of view of the events, I can tell you that this year we've had more events than ever if before the pandemic we had a team of 10 plus people and seven or eight collaborators once life became free again uh, well uh, we we at some point drew the line 
and we realized uh, we have realized that it's 10 of us in the basic team but uh, we've had 45 collaborators and a lot more events and i'm telling you this because there have been lots of events uh, because we have been called invited and uh, where we met a lot of people at the theater in the theater hall for instance well i cannot give you any f figures because uh, we opened sh before the pandemic and uh, closed and then we have opened only a couple of months ago so i cannot really talk about the public or our public uh, it happened once that we only had two people in the public and we had to cancel the show so um, if the world knows you uh, actually we used to be known by managers but not the public and if theater or festival managers knew us they invited us but the people didn't come because the people didn't know us so uh, it's been very difficult for us to promote ourselves as for the virtual digital environment it's kind of a disappointment for us because once with a pandemic we had over 50 online events that is at the very beginning there was a lot we kept allocating resources uh, we drafted episodes storytelling and so on and so forth and we didn't actually earn any public yeah so we hardly earned any and yes those shows are interactive and as a parent or as a worker with the children, so to say, there was some kind of cognitive dissonance. So I'm saying that I will not allow my child to sit in front of a monitor all day long, but then the kindergarten was online. So we were trying to reduce the duration of the performances uh, maximum one or two events 30 minutes per week so i personally wasn't agree or uh, didn't agree to invite the children to sit in front of the monitors for hours after the events uh, public theaters started to put on uh, free shows so our shows were not exactly free of charge in in the sense that uh, it they were on donations so we had to stop at some point i don't know i guess that we had uh, some things to earn mm, because uh, we saw that people from uh, all over Romania were watching us and even people from abroad but we didn't realize how we could ensure the quality of the image the pixels how we can offer the same quality online uh, than the quality we can offer uh, in a live show yeah so it's it's very difficult it seems easy but it's difficult yeah we work with the uh, we adapted that classical hungarian text uh, we played it several times in in different uh, different towns but uh, we also had online presence so actually we played online it was a live show broadcasted online and after a while i realized that I'm saying the monologue, but I see myself on the screen, so I have no idea of how the public reacts. And then I lost the appetite. Although 
this performance is highly interactive and there was the possibility to make comments however it wasn't the real thing uh, we do feel the negative impact of the pandemic lots of things happened uh, it's not only the effect of the pandemic in May this year, we had an opening, uh, it was full house, and then the second performance, the next day, there were 20 people in the public, so before the pandemics we used to have public, now it is very difficult to, uh, to join people together. So, I'm quite disappointed because during the pandemic people didn't realize, they, people realized that they didn't actually need theater, not that they didn't miss theater. And this has been a, a big disappointment for me, for us. Yeah, something strange happened to us during the pandemic. We had a, a story house. It's the memorial houses in Cluj and uh, creation workshops in Cluj and the trips uh, for people to discover these memorial houses. And then it happened that we went into the countryside and uh, there was no internet. And of course we didn't want to choose another school. Now that school has a little bit of internet, not too much. And the road has been fixed as well. Anyway, we haven't chosen that school for its accessibility. But we fell in love with that school a couple of years ago. But uh, instead of going online, we had to find a solution to go physical. So we had to go to the uh, to hospitals and we had to go to different places to be there, flesh and blood, because we couldn't just switch to online. In the hospital wards, for instance, uh, patients needed to see us live because there was no infrastructure for, for online. Uh, performances. Of course we had workshops that uh, weren't joined by the public but we had to get creative because our public from the hospital wards uh, didn't have uh, online access anyway. So all these seem very useful uh, for me, for us. We need to organize virtual tours as well of these memorial houses because you may be from uh, another angle of Romania and you are curious how this memorial house in Cluj looks like. So you had to ensure the audio material, so digital material. So I guess that some parts of the online are really, really uh, worthwhile keeping. There was a problem there. Many people was, were really thinking what will be, um, especially in, in, in the expensive towns, what the future will bring for us and our projects. And some kind of a deprofessionalization uh, uh, form appeared. And the pandemic, <coughs> and from the, uh, it, was, it, it had some good aspects like uh, uh, asking ourselves the questions what we want to do what is relevant to, to do and in in that point or after that po that mo that moment everyone found themselves on a very unpredictable terrain or grounds <clears throat> there were certain anxieties there and we are still working uh, to sort out those problems the pandemic is over but the it but its influences and effects are still here we need to ask the questions to our, uh, to ourselves uh, uh, related to our work, uh, 
and the, the efficiency and the effectiveness of our work in the spaces uh, uh, we try to reorganize and restructure our activities how we can maintain our energy keep our energy and produce even better results this is how we succeeded to reach the idea of producing less and uh, maybe not every performance need to be uh, uh, performed five times in a row and so on and uh, we we have two shows going on uh, in series of, of two shows in uh, playing a performance in a in a, in a day the same people in very different things they re repeating it because they work they are working in putting it on the stage playing in it and then removing everything and this is how we are trying to organize our activity better. And in that sense, we did not really feel uh, that the audience was missing at that point. For instance, in Reactor on the 21st uh, of March and then in April, we played it again, only was something benefic for us. People... I repeat, feel very differently about it and they have got their own anxieties. They don't know what will come out of that, where this thing leads us. The future is very dim and and difficult for us I've got two more questions more complex questions uh, because I'm trying not to ask seven different questions you're talking about your activities and your educational theater and I would like to ask first who in Romania is really doing that uh, job is there a faculty pedagogy psychology faculty and what exactly the educational part uh, m means what does that mean you are talking about educating the public public and how do you identify the needs of the children do you have s uh, case studies how do you know what, they, what their needs are when you produce uh, shows for them <coughs> I know that um, educational theater does not exist at the university. Or maybe this was the first year when they had some some program in the university. This is something new that was not yet experimented, and we don't know how it will be. We hope it will be okay, it will work, but we don't know that. Educational theater in our work and in our work and in, in my colleagues' work in these activities, in these practices, are present. And that, that's all I wanted to say. When I'm talking about educational theatre, I'm thinking of a very strict genre. I'm, I'm not sure if... I'm, I'm not sure if, if all of us understand the same thing when we are talking about that because there are these terms in Hungarian and English, what exactly it, it, it means for us. I'm talking about a show, a performance, not necessarily in the most strict sense of the word, a very participative one with a lot of interruptions, when there are conversations going on with the audience and the public. And I would really be interested to hear your opinions and you as viewers or you as the audience what do you think about that about various aspects improvisations uh, and so on and all these events that i would like to call events here have got a theme a very uh, clear theme for instance to give you a, an example we have got a, a show about Carl, the little crow. We played that for smaller children, but we also did that for 
for bigger children also it's it's a crow that cannot sing because it's a crow and and the, and this little crow is sent to a musical school because uh, his parents want uh, uh, want 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 him to become a singer these are the expectations it's about the expectations of parents about young people how they how they deal with that how they can accommodate uh, you, you cannot talk about direct uh, about these things directly but through this tale of the little crow they uh, 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 somehow get in touch with uh, with the topic I wouldn't say we are experts of the field but we are very interested theater is there you are there as an actor and you need to be very uh, much available uh, in that particular moment but at the other, at, uh, on the other hand, you need you need to be present for them as well, and you have to maintain a conversation with them. That's what they do. Uh, well, you couldn't really hear the question. I was saying that theater in education is something that should be uh, done in the school not not only on the level of theater that's why i was asking if you are thinking of that uh, how, how do you see this project of theater in education just a little because that's that's the important thing we are talking about different things what you are talking about theater in education <coughs> it's something different uh different from what uh, levy has just said I wouldn't say it doesn't exist in Romania. In Cluj, I was referring to the fact that at the University of Cluj, uh, it, it has just been started. I will return a little bit to the, the notion of education. I was, I think there is a, uh, some legislation needed, a little uh, something that, that is a little above us, and uh, so that we can have access to the classes and be introduced in the curriculum I think it's illegal now for us to enter uh, to the classes and uh, and uh, be part of the curriculum for the time being. It's not possible. I think it's more important to have a dialogue and the process of documentation. Somehow uh, a, a performance that is dedicated to a younger audience. And I was always asking my, to myself whether my projects are for my generation or for uh, or other generations to bring younger people to talk about their needs and uh, for that indeed more serious documentation is needed uh, I'm not able to go and do education uh, in school although all our projects are contemporary based on contemporary dramaturgy and on the needs of, of, of the people and somehow they have got an echo I'm thinking uh, of answering uh, the question. In the beginning, this had very much uh, to do with us. What we did not really like uh, in the school. So that's why we created a, a show or a performance of scientific experiments which looked a little bit like a class we didn't know at that point that there is such a thing as fun science and so on and so forth we wanted to uh, organize a class in which you experiment various things in various fields and domains in the in the beginning there were 10 minutes of mathematics 10 minutes of drawing 10 minutes of chemistry 10 minutes of music 10 minutes of physics so something like that. In the meantime, we changed it. And what did not change, though, was that uh, we were requested to go to the school and, and the performance was played for children uh, from very, uh, very low ages, like two years till eight years or uh, 18. Science can be entertaining. And in that sense, there are all kinds of experiments in included in the show that are explained in the language in a language or in in a, in a way that is understood by the audience by the children 
to learn from the mistakes, for instance, to encourage questions. And all this part with the school and science can really be an entertaining thing if you try to look at it from a, from a different perspective. That, that is perhaps connected to the question. Oh, there was another question regarding uh, to, to the theatre. Yes. Personally, I also worked as an animator in parties, at parties, uh, in order to obtain some money. And I learned what is going on in a party where children meet each other, the difference between uh, magnet children, for instance, or very rich children, and how you can involve them into various small games to play, or in the villages, uh, what can I do there in, in, in a community like that, so do it a little bit differently, some kind of exercises in acting, and so on and so forth and in that sense that kind of activity existing we try to diversify it and collect information right on the spot we did not really ask them directly but we really reached some kind of a conclusion based on how they behaved and that's how we succeeded to obtain the information in our case it's not we don't have a methodology in place, some kind of didactical things for activity with, with youngsters or young adults. We try to create equality between the audience and the trainers and, and, and us, uh, uh, trainees and us. In various places, actors coordinated such activities. We could not imagine what kind of local values would come out in various places whether we organize an exhibition or bring a sheep or bring a grandmother who is doing needlework or n knitting we did not know what are the objectives what are the specific topics that come out anything could come out of it that was that kind of freedom we had we had a, a acting or class or dramaturgy class all kinds of tales with various characters could be placed on a board and they could carry on with the story in whichever direction they wanted to it wasn't something very specific uh, really premeditated before I think it's very useful and it's very valuable that they produce things they don't usually do to come up with new ideas maybe one of them go to a theater and they will go to an other course that they like more course of photography you have got that kind of openness of mind so you can choose what exactly you are interested in and want to learn more about and before we had these theatrical performances, we went uh, very much to various subjects that were important for a certain category of people. What the relevant, one of the most relevant shows was entitled Three Million. That was uh, before the referendum about the gay marriages. There was, there was some kind of theatrical performance uh, based on various resources and various interviews. And if you looked at the performance or watched it you could really take the part of any side take, uh, take sides it wasn't really uh, visibly given any kind of direction that you had to identify with this or that view they, they were very finely and beautifully constructed these shows so that you can find yourself wherever you want in that issue the liberty of expression and the liberty of affiliating uh, and uh, the liberty of asking questions and after that, during the conversations we had, uh, it was interesting to see uh, that they really raised the question of whether they were right or wrong in their perceptions or their, their ideas beforehand. It's more uh, like that in our case, not really connected to the school curriculum. I uh, understand that our time is over. We even 
passed it. Uh, we, we even uh, exceeded our time for this uh, discussion. A couple of keywords I would still like to hear. And while we are waiting some kind of cultural policies that would take more in serious our work, uh, I would like you to say a few keywords that are connected to your work. And thank you very much for your presence here. Your teams, I mean, keywords that are relevant for your teams so that your work is more financially supported or more recognized as a public service, more visible and so on and so forth. Stability, predictability, perhaps. Two very important keywords. Money, time and space. Five keywords. Money, of course, that's important. We have all kinds of funding sources, but we never know what comes next. We would like more dedicated funding and more, uh, more tailored to our needs. Money, that's, that's true, a very important keyword. And maybe a better organization of communication. We still meet each other every now and then. And uh, we know, of course, uh, uh, each and uh, uh, the stories of each other. And this happens in various places in the country. On the other hand, we don't always know what kind of real needs are with the NGOs. And there are, there are a couple of, uh, couple of counties where there is just one or maybe two uh, NGOs. Connection. Connection would be an important keyword. I was uh, going, I was, I was thinking of team, teams. And I think a psychotherapist is, or, or a psychologist is, would also be needed, especially after this uh, very difficult period that we had lived through. And I don't know, perhaps it's strange, some kind of an organizer, I think it is needed, that, that an, organize, an organizer that wouldn't do anything else but organize, because we all do all kinds of things, and then we reach burnout, and uh, I think someone would be needed to be paid and uh, e expected to organize. So the rest of us can really take care of the things we are good at. Let's not do each and every of us all the things by ourselves. Okay, thank you very much for your participation in our meeting. And I would be really great it would be really grateful to sign the list of participants it would be very important for us for documentation purposes the list is there